Hello everyone, and welcome back to Top 10 Trends. You know, I don't say this enough, but I'm hyper-intelligent. Hell, I've seen the sixth season of Rick and Morty. I'm boasting at least a 300 IQ. But the more you learn, the more discoveries you make, the more disturbing and the more depressing you find life to be. It's almost as if you could know too much. The geniuses here at Top 10 Trends have discovered some disgusting, disturbing things, especially in our line of work. These are 10 of some of the creepiest discoveries we've ever made. Number 10. Mind control is kind of real. Enter Manuel Rodriguez Delgado. He lived from 1915 to 2011. He was a Spanish professor of physiology at Yale University, and he was famous for his research on mind control through electrical stimulation of the brain. Rodriguez Delgado's research centered on the use of electrical signals to evoke responses in the brain. His earliest work was with cats, but he did later experiment with monkeys and humans, including psychiatric patients. Much of his work was done with an invention he called the Stimosiever, a radio which joined a stimulator of brain waves with a receiver which monitored EEG waves and sent them back on a separate radio channel. Some of these stimosievers are as small as half dollars. This allowed the subject of the experiment full freedom of movement while allowing the experimenter to control the experiment. The stimosiever could be used to stimulate emotions and control behavior. According to Rodriguez Delgado, radio stimulation of different points in the amygdala and hippocampus in the four patients produced a variety of effects. Delgado stated that brain transmitters can remain in a person's head for life. The energy to activate the brain transmitter is transmitted by way of radio frequencies. Using the stimosiever, he could not only elicit emotions, but could also elicit specific physical reactions. These physical reactions, such as the movement of a limb or the clenching of a fist, were achieved when he stimulated the motor cortex. He was called a technological wizard by one of his Yale colleagues. He chose patients who were desperately ill, whose disorders had resisted all previous treatments. His most famous example of the stimosiever occurred at a bull breeding ranch. He stepped into the ring with a bull that had a stimosiever implanted within its brain. When the bull charged, Delgado pressed a remote control button, and the bull stopped. He taped the stunt, and it can be seen today. Number 9. Head transplants. A head transplant is an experimental surgical operation involving the grafting of one organism's head onto the body of another. In many experiments, the recipient's head was not removed, but in others it has been. Experimentation in animals began in the early 1900s. As of 2018, no durable success has been achieved. Alexis Carroll was a French surgeon who had developed improved surgical methods to connect blood vessels in the context of organ transplantation. In 1908, he attempted to graft the head of one dog on an intact second dog. The grafted head showed some reflexes early on, but deteriorated quickly, and the animal was killed after a few hours. In 1954, Vladimir Demikov, a Soviet surgeon who had done important work to improve coronary bypass surgery, performed an experiment in which he grafted the head of an upper body, including the front legs, of one dog onto another. The effort was focused on how to provide blood supply to the donor head and upper body and not on grafting the nervous system. The dogs he experimented on survived a few days. One survived a whole month. The grafted body parts were able to move and react to stimulus. The animals died due to transplant rejection. In 2012, Zhao Ping Ren published work in which he grafted the head of a mouse onto another mouse's body. The focus was on how to avoid harm from the loss of blood. Some of the grafted heads survived up to six months. In 2015, Ren again published work in which he cut the heads off mice but left the brainstem in place, then connected the vasculature of the donor head to the recipient body. And it became possible to keep the animals alive without life support. In 2016, Ren and Sergio Canavero published a review of attempted as well as possible neuroprotection strategies that they said could be researched for potential use in head transplantation. Head transplantation is almost a real thing. Number 8. Artificial life. Bioengineers have made an artificial jellyfish using silicone and muscle cells from a rat's heart. The synthetic creature, dubbed a medusoid, looks like a flower with eight petals. When placed in an electric field, it pulses and swims exactly like its living counterpart. Functionally, they built a jellyfish. Fish. Genetically, this thing's a rat, a quote from Kit Parker, a biophysicist at Harvard University, who led the research. This research has actually been around since about 2007, and it's become even more advanced with each passing year. We haven't made life from nothing yet, but we can take cells from one animal and turn it into an entirely new animal. Number seven, our minds aren't what we think they are. Freud might have been wrong in the details, but one of his main ideas, that a lot of our behaviors and emotions are driven by factors we're unaware of, are very correct. If you're happy, optimistic, ambitious, check the weather. Sunny days make people happier and more helpful. In a taste test, you're likely to have a strong preference for the first sample you taste, even if they're all identical. The more often you see a person or object, the more you'll like it. Mating decisions are based partly on smell, and our cognitive failings are legion. We take a few anecdotes and make incorrect generalizations, 
assumptions, and we misinterpret information to support our preconceptions. We're easily swayed by irrelevant details, too. What we think are memories, by the way, they're just stories we tell ourselves each time, and each time they change, and we recall an event differently. That's true even for flashbulb or traumatic memories. Like millions of people, neuroscientist Karim Nader has very vivid memories of 9-11, but as an expert on memory, and in particular the malleability of memory, he knows better than to trust his recollections. As clear and detailed as these memories feel, psychologists find they're surprisingly inaccurate. Wah, wah. Elephants may never forget, but they don't remember correctly either. Number six, nearly all ancient human cultures revolved around sacrifice. People lost their lives for a number of reasons, to ensure fertile crops, to follow masters to the afterlife, to bring rain, so on and so forth. The victims, however, were often of a lower class, slaves or captives from adjacent communities, and their deaths were frequently drawn out to make them as terrible as possible. The perpetrators were the social elite. A new idea known as the social control hypothesis was popularized in the late 1990s with the study of human sacrifice in early cultures. Now a new study adds to the evidence that the hypothesis might be correct, that sacrifice was around to keep people at the top and other people at the bottom. In these early cultures, sacrifice was a tool to terrorize the masses. It provided supernatural justification for punishment. For instance, on Shortland Island, which is near Papua New Guinea, a human sacrifice would be necessary upon the building of a common house. The victim would be placed in a hole and then crushed under the weight of the pole dropped into the pit. Another group, the Melano people of northern Borneo, would tie the hands of several slaves to the mausoleum of their recently deceased master. Abandoned there, the slaves would die of exposure and supposedly serve their master in the afterlife. The motto also suggests that human sacrifice was not that important in making the transition from an egalitarian society to a stratified one. That's because if human sacrifice is being used at all to maintain social power, there has to be power to start off with. There was a tomb found in eastern China that scientists determined was the grave of an aristocrat buried with nearly four dozen victims of human sacrifice. And ancient Egyptians, of course, are known to have similarly buried slaves alongside their deceased rulers. Strange that all of these cultures developed the same practice at once, isn't it? Number five, what the universe is made of. When you think of the universe, you probably think of planets, stars, black holes, and the space in between. But that makes up only 4% of whatever is out there. The rest is two flavors of dark or unknown stuff. Dark matter, 23% of the universe, estimated I would assume, and dark energy at a huge 73%. Scientists have some ideas about what dark matter might be, still hypothetical particles though they may be, but they have hardly a clue what dark energy is. The effort to solve it has mobilized a generation of astronomers in a rethinking of physics and cosmology to rival and surpass Galileo's revolution. Astronomers do know, thanks to these dark parts, that the universe is somehow expanding, and not only expanding, but expanding faster and faster, not slower and slower. Ultimately, everything in the universe will drift farther and farther apart until the universe is uniformly cold and desolate. That is, at least, if there's no new matter being added, or energy, too. Number four, the stone spheres of Costa Rica. The stone spheres of Costa Rica are an assortment of over 300 petrospheres in Costa Rica. They are commonly attributed to the extinct Dekey culture, and are sometimes referred to as the Dekey spheres. Their exact significance remains uncertain. Numerous myths surround the stones, such as they came from Atlantis, or that they were made by nature. Some local legends state that the native inhabitants had access to a potion able to soften the rock. Limestone can be dissolved by acidic solutions obtained from plants. It has been claimed that the spheres are perfect, or very near perfect in roundness, although some spheres are known to vary only about five centimeters in diameter. Also, the stones have been damaged and eroded over the years, so it's impossible to know their exact original shape. Number three, killer bird flu virus. There's been a question scientists and virologists have been struggling with for a long time, because they developed a bird flu virus with a 60% human mortality rate that could spread as easily as the common coal. If the virus falls into the wrong hands, it could obviously be modified by bioterrorists into a weapon that kills billions of people. Some people believe that publishing the H5N1 study, the killer bird flu virus, would have the opposite effect, allowing governments and other scientists to learn about how they could counteract such pandemics. The virus is called the Armageddon virus, and it's still up for debate whether or not it's going to stay a secret. As of now, it's still a secret, but it could easily be more devastating than the Spanish flu and Black Plague combined. The Spanish flu, which killed about 30 million people, only had a mortality rate of about 3%. 
So yeah, that could just show up at any time. Have fun with that. Number two, drug-resistant bacteria. Antibiotics and vaccines are saving millions of lives, and without these wonders of modern science, many of us would have died in childhood. But some microbes are evolving faster than we can find ways to fight them. The flu virus mutates so fast that last year's vaccination is usually ineffective against this year's bug. Hospitals are infested with antibiotic-resistant staph infections from a bacteria that could turn a small cut into a limb or life-threatening infection. And new diseases keep jumping from animals to humans. Ebola's from apes, SARS from masks, palm civets, hentavirus from rodents, bird flu from birds, swine flu from swine, even tuberculosis is making a comeback, in part because some strains of the bacterium have developed multi-drug resistance. Yay! And number one, we might be in the middle of a mass extinction. Paleontologists have identified five points in Earth's history when, for whatever reason, mass extinctions have eliminated many or most species. Today, according to most biologists, we're in the middle of a sixth great extinction. Mastodons were the earliest victims. As humans moved from continent to continent, large animals that had thrived for millions of years began to disappear. Mastodons in North America, giant kangaroos in Australia, dwarf elephants in Europe, whatever the cause of this early wave of extinctions, humans are driving modern extinctions by hunting, destroying habitats, introducing invasive species, and inadvertently spreading diseases. Oh, no, wait, this is a Guardian article. Never mind, we're fine. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this list. If you did like the list, please give it a like down below. If you want to see more content, please subscribe. What's your favorite thing you're afraid of? Mine is someone killing me and replacing me so completely, no one knows that it's not me, and then they hurt my family. I hope you guys are having a great day. Bye bye